A transmission for large construction vehicles contains numerous compound gears and gear trans, which undergo considerable amounts of torque. It's common for manufacturers of these transmissions to check the strength of the gears with the static approximation of the gear loads. However, this is only one aspect of the performance, and may, as in the cases about to be described, result in an unexpected field failure. It's important for all designers of rotating or vibrating parts to understand the natural frequencies of their systems using a frequency study in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Before proceeding, some frequency-related terminology should be reviewed. All parts and assemblies have natural frequencies, or frequencies at which they are likely to vibrate at. These are typically reported in hertz. If a part or system is shaken or excited by a motor or other rotating or vibrating input at a natural frequency, the amplitude of vibration may be exponentially larger than the amplitude of the input. This can and often does lead to premature system failure from static overload or fatigue-related stresses. A body has, theoretically, an infinite number of natural frequencies. Typically, however, only the first five or six nodes will respond to resonant excitation most dramatically. A vibrating shape or mode shape is associated with each natural frequency. Now, this is the deformation the part or assembly will oscillate in, if excited at that particular frequency. When this deformation is similar to the deformation under applied loads, the impact of resonance can be even more catastrophic. Knowledge of natural frequencies and mode shapes should be used in conjunction with static loading results for a complete understanding of a system when vibrations are present. The compound drive ring and gear shown was only analyzed for worst-case static loading prior to release for manufacturing. In the application, the gears are part of a planetary train, so the loads were assumed balanced, and only the result in max torque was considered. The results were as expected. The transition that corresponds to the weld between the drive ring and the pinion showed the maximum stress on the model. The magnitude of the stress was well beyond the yield strength of the steel and sufficiently below the failure strength. The product engineers concluded that there were no failure concerns for this part. However, after approximately 2,000 hours of use, many of these components did fail in the field. Upon review of several failed gears, it was apparent that something else was happening in the system beyond simple torque. Had the part failed due to balanced torque, the failure would have followed the perimeter of the weld. This crack did initiate at the weld as shown by point B in the image, but followed a symmetric path out to the perimeter of the drive ring that is inconsistent with torsional failure. All the failed parts showed the same crack. To understand this failure, the engineering team chose, post-mortem, to explore the dynamic aspects of the system. Setting up a frequency analysis in SOLIDWORKS simulation is a very straightforward task, and as will be shown, the benefits of this simple check are huge. A frequency study is defined from the main panel. The material definition can simply be dragged from the previously defined static study. However, the applicable restraints do require a little more discussion. Adding restraints adds stiffness to a system and can affect both the natural frequencies calculated and their related mode shapes. In this application, the gear is assembled to the shaft with a slip fit. Consequently, restraining the part in any way would artificially stiffen the system, so this part should be analyzed as unrestrained. The first of six modes of an unrestrained system will be zero and can be ignored. The non-zero modes should be explored. The completed frequency analysis shows six, zero, or near-zero modes, as you would expect in an unrestrained system. The first two real natural frequencies were at approximately 600 hertz. These are symmetric modes separated by 90 degrees. Mode shape essentially corresponds to a two-lobed collapse of the drive ring. A non-symmetric mode was found at 1190 hertz, characterized by a diaphragm or oil can-like response of the upper surface. Finally, another symmetric mode pair was found at 1270 hertz. This is a three-lobed version of the drive ring collapse similar to the first pair. The next step is to understand how these frequencies and shapes compare to the actual system operating speeds and the known failure mode. 
This plot indicates the engine speed in RPM to gear speed in hertz. This gear is used in three speed ranges, much like the first through third gears in a manual transmission. Studies of this particular engine have identified that 1800 RPM is the most critical operating speed in ranges 2 and 3. Ideally, components in the system should have natural frequencies in a range between 1800 RPM in the second range, or 600 Hz and 1800 RPM in the third range, or 950 Hz. The most damaging natural frequencies will be at 600 or 950 Hz. Additional review of the application suggests that most use is in the high end of the second range, so avoiding this range of frequencies completely will be ideal. Based on this understanding, a good target natural frequency will be 800 Hz. Overlaying the natural frequencies calculated by SOLIDWORKS simulation on this plot, we see that the first natural frequency, a two-lobed mode at 600 Hz, is in precisely the worst part of the operating range identified. The next mode is at a frequency beyond the operating conditions of the system and ceases to be an issue. Examining this response more closely, we can see that the deformations in this mode shape correspond very well to the fracture observed in the system. The resonant vibrations resulted in a fatigue failure along the flexor path in the upper face. This could not have been predicted from the static gear loading on the system. Even without having seen the failure of first natural frequency at the most critical operating point of the system should cause concern for a design engineer. Now that the likely cause has been identified, how can SOLIDWORKS simulation help resolve the failure? Being tightly integrated with SOLIDWORKS, design options can be explored quickly and easily. Three distinct changes were explored to determine the best direction. First, a stiffening rib was added to the outer perimeter of the drive ring, which increased the first natural frequency to 685, so that's a good start. Adding a stiffening rib to the upper face of the drive ring seemed like a promising modification, but the first mode was only increased by 10 Hz to 610 Hz. The third direction explored was thickening the wall of the upper face. This single change pushed the first mode to nearly 800 Hz, exactly where it needed to be. So this new design was implemented, and these vehicles have subsequently logged over 7,000 hours with no failures. If you recall, gears with the original design were failing around 2,000 hours. The redesign is considered to be successful.